The one hour north of our home in Bedlington is a little village called Kirk Newt. So we're out and about today in the Cheviot Hills. We're going to go for another walk. So let's get going. So today's walk is about seven mile and this is the Hethpool and Yeverin Bell walk. So it's I think there's gonna be quite a bit of a climb on this one because Yeverin Hill is up on a it's a big hill basically. Again I'll apologize for the sound's rubbish, I haven't bought any new sound equipment and it's quite windy today. But the sun's out, at least it's dry for now. It's not meant to rain today, I think it's just meant to be a bit cloudy but bit chilly about nine degrees it's not too bad but that wind's pretty cold so let's get going on this walk and we'll tell you a little bit about where we're going aim is we're going to do a walk and then we'll stop at a pub on the way back and feature a pub like every episode and talk about what walk just summarize it if there's any suggestions that you guys have got then let me know we've already had a few from that one video for holy island so holy island is the one we can do we'll do that one in the future but we'll certainly look into it there's loads of places in northumberland to walk so give us your suggestions and let us know why you'd like us to go. Just as we've got a little break from the wind, probably got about a mile and a half in maybe. It hasn't been too bad, but just been to a field there. 
muddy as out, but it's like walking through sand. It's like drudging. You ever had them dreams where you try to run and you just can't move because the ground's so sticky? That's what that was like. So we've climbed up a little bit, it's not too bad. There's some really exposed parts that's really windy. And of course it's going to be wild when we get up this hill. So as we are out in the Cheviots, we're surrounded by quite a few big hills here. So we'll just give you a little bit of perspective. We're just walking through a bit of a woodland here. We're surrounded by three quite big hills here. You probably can't see the one behind, but this is called the Bell, and that stands at 246 meters high. We've got a huge hill right in front of us here, and that's called Western Tor. And this one currently stands at 537 meters. And then next to that, we've got Easter Tor, which stands at 438 meters. So there are some really big hills in the Cheviots, but you can see these from miles around. I mean, even in Newcastle, where I work, I'm on the third floor of our building and you can see the Cheviot Hills from there and it's, it's quite a distance, probably 40 or 50 mile away. So that just kind of gives you an idea of how big the Cheviot Hills actually are. And you can see where I used to live in a little village called Ellington, you'd always see them snow capped in the winter. If they're getting snow on, they're obviously quite high. It's a different way of getting over. <laughs> so this is Hethpool Lynn. I don't know how you get down there, but apparently you can go wild swimming around here, which I wouldn't fancy anyway because it's bloody freezing. It's cold enough in the summer, never mind now. But it looks like there's a bridge over there, so we're going to walk up there and have a look across. Proper scary cat. Come on! <laughs> Wobbly legs! So the path after Hethpool Lynn leads to St Cuthbert's Way. So while we're walking there, there's a little bit of history about St Cuthbert's Way. St Cuthbert's Way is a long distance footpath that measures 62 miles. This begins in Melrose, Scotland and finishes on Lindisfarne Island in England. The route was inspired by the life of St Cuthbert, who was a 7th century saint, a native of the borders who spent his life in service of the church. He began his ministry in Melrose in 650 AD and would eventually become the Bishop of Lindisfarne. The route provides a link over the Cheviot Hills between the southern upland at Melrose and the Pennine Way National Trail at Kirkyetham with the Northumbrian Coastline Path. The route was first devised by Ron Shaw and Auburn in 1996. Ron Shaw continues to sit on the walk steering group which is responsible for managing the path. The route can be walked in either direction, but most walkers start in Melrose in Scotland and walk towards Holy Island, and it usually takes four to six days. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
So now we're on to St Cuthbert's Way. So we're about just over two and a half mile in. So St Cuthbert's Way, this particular section, runs through kind of the rugged parts of Northumberland. So dotted along this section, there's some forts from the Iron Age. And in the summer, the hilltops around here are usually covered in like a purple heather. And you might also see some wild goats, but apparently there's a, a wild herd of them runs around these parts. I'll explain where they've come from. These feral goats are not native to Britain. They were brought here in Neolithic times as domestic stock derived from Brazor, Cabra Igagris, a native of the Middle East. Most British herds are thought to be descendants of domesticated stock that were allowed to go feral when sheep replaced goats as the favoured stock of upland farmers during the Middle Ages. Primitive British feral goats are relatively small, have ears that stand upright, horns in both sexes, and lack the toggles found on the face of the modern dairy goat. The coats are long, coarse, and shaggy and their colours vary from mostly dark brown to light grey with white patches. The feral goats of the Chivia Hills in Northumberland are thought to be some of the best examples of this primitive type of goat. So my last Northumberland video, I mentioned that Jack was going to be getting an operation so just an update on that. There is no update. <laughs> We're still waiting on, no on a date. It. But uh, thank you everybody for all the well wishes. Yeah. Much appreciated. I've had loads, so that's really nice of everybody to yeah. raise their concerns and send their wishes. So this is one of the forts, apparently there's plenty of these knocking around on here, it's the first one we've seen, you can see it's just made of rocks, it's just obviously been piled up, plenty of years of history there I bet, so just up on the hill here, you probably can't see, but see some like black and white, I think, that, I think they may be the one, just opposite the fort well. They hide out in some of the undergrowth and stuff here, so we've just seen a massive one running across. And of course, Tig has a good hair, so he's probably going to be all over the place hunting them out. This is going to be a bit of a claim, Jacqueline. Hopefully we should be in business today. 
think one thing St Cuthbert was was a masochist doing this why well, I wanted to come over this hill when there's this flat path doing there tire now. It's actually been quite a tough climb. It takes a while to get up. It's like a steady kind of incline all the way. I did want to fly my drone a bit up here. So I got like a decent panorama of the landscape and views. But it might be way too windy up here for my little drone. I've tested it in the wind and it's, it's actually pretty good. It's a lot stronger up here. Anyway, we're about to hit the sun. explore the largest Iron Age hill fort in the region and see the remains of more than 100 roundhouses. This fort was a tribal centre for the Votadini, a local Celtic tribe who used to rule this local area. There we are, that was quite steep coming down. I think it was harder coming down and going up because it was just a straight bank down. It was pretty tough going on the legs, my knees are a bit sore, my legs are tired. But we're nearly back to Kirk Newton, just passing through a little farm here. And then we'll be on the main road and we'll be on my way back to the car. We're back in Kirk Newton now, so we're gonna get back to the car. We're gonna head back to Wooler. We're gonna stop there just for a drink, just a soft drink, before we head home. So we'll pick a pub out in Wooler and we'll summarise our little walk and let you know what we thought. We're in the number one, I think it's the number one wine bar or number one Wooler 
Uh, we sometimes come here when we go camping, so we're uh, just enjoying my diet coke. So yes, that was the heft pool. Heft pool, then. So, <laughs> was that was it. Was that it? So that was the heft pool in <laughs> and Yverly Bell walk. So that was seven mile. It took about four and a half to five hours. We did stop a few times. Well, as we well, did. Though. I mean, it's you know doing the drone and. <clears throat> all that kind of stuff it's, it's hard work so it's you've got to keep stopping and then taking different shots and whatever so we probably could have done it a lot quicker and just kind of gone around but um it was quite challenging actually it was a bit more challenging than i expected especially the Eva and bell it was that was hard work and because it was the last bit that was really hard yeah well coming down was probably the hardest bit because actually going up wasn't too bad um bad enough. well it was for you I thought it was okay, but coming down it was just like that, nearly all the way and then the dog kept pulling so Jackie was nearly over on her face. She was getting a bit angry I think with uh, the Take dog. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was, but it was it was a good walk, it was nice, it was, I mean the scenery was tremendous, like you're yeah, just surrounded by the hills and uh, it was really nice, really nice. So what did you think of the walk? Uh, I enjoyed it right until the end coming down the worst bit was I didn't mind going up the hill it was hard but we did it but yeah coming down was really really tough and um, it is really steep and if I could if I had to do it again I would do it on a day where it's not so windy because yeah. it was really cold and blowing a hoodie up there. Yeah I mean you probably couldn't hear what the top because it was that windy but even the dog hated being up there. I was <laughs> His little, his little fur was blown around in the wind. <laughs> his ears were flapping away, he didn't like it. But yeah, so that was it anyway. How, how many jays out of five would you give that walk? Ah, mm, uh, four, four. It was hard. I think it was harder than it said on the thing. I don't know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, that was classed as an intermediate, but I think that was... There was some... There was Pretty some tough, tough climbs to in that. Fair, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, was, so. it was hard. And like I said, on the walk, I think St Cuthbert was a masochist. Because, uh, why would you choose that as your walk? Oh, right, like, yeah, yeah, was, choose that as your down. way when there was like this flatter bits. I mean, you don't know what the terrain was like back then. Yeah. But. I mean, the scenery was nice. Yeah. Obviously, it was, it was good. It, I don't think it's probably been out of the ones that we've done. It's probably not my favourite, favourite one. But it was a different. It was a different one. We've done the same ones a few times, but um, yeah, that was good. It was good. Recommend it. It was something a bit different, like I say, and it was a change of scenery, which was nice. Yeah. Um, and like the views at the top there were lovely as well. Just 360 oh, yeah, panoramic. Exactly. So yeah. So anyway, that's this one. So that kind of this video will give you like a bit of an idea if we do set up a separate channel what the walks will kind of be like, what the videos will be like, we'll kind of finish off in a pub somewhere, we'll feature a pub. We're not getting food here because we're kind of on this diet and cutting down on the drink, so... Oh, we didn't plan on having... No, we didn't, we didn't, but, um, so that's it anyway. So if you've liked this video, give it that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one. See you later.